Hello friends. In the previous video, we discussed about matrix form of a system of linear equations and the corresponding augmented form. Now, we shall see how the augmented matrix can be used to derive the solution. In this lecture, we will discuss about elementary row operations, Eklen form and reduced row Eklen form of a matrix. There are three types of elementary row operations. First, adding a multiple of one row to another row. Mathematically, Ri can be changed to Ri plus K times of Rj. Second, multiplying all entries of one row by a non-zero constant, that is Ri can be transformed to k times of ri. The last one is interchanging two rows. That is, the ith row can be interchanged with the jth row. Two matrices are said to be row equivalent if so A is said to be equivalent to B if one can be obtained from the other by applying elementary row operations. For example, if my matrix A is 1, 2, 3, 4 and matrix B is 1, 2, 0, minus 2, then a is equivalent to B since B can be obtained from A by using the operation R2 goes to R2 minus 3 times of R1. Similarly, B from B we can get back A by applying the operation R2 goes to R2 plus 3 times of R1. So this elementary row operation is the inverse of this elementary row, row operation. So A equivalent to B implies that B is equivalent to A. So, an, so this relation here is symmetric. Also any matrix A is equivalent to itself. So it is reflexive. And if A is equivalent to B and B is equivalent to C, then A and C, they are also both equivalent. Hence, this relation is an equivalence relation. Using elementary row operations, a given matrix can be converted to a simpler form, which is called the row Eklen form or Eklen form. A matrix is said to be in Eklen form if it satisfies these three conditions. The first condition says that if there is a row of all zeros, then it must be at the bottom of the matrix. The second condition says that the leading entry, the leading entry is the first non-zero entry of any row. So the leading entry of any row is to be to the right of the leading entry of the previous row. And the last property says that entries below the leading entry must be zero. Further, a matrix is said to be in reduced row echelon form if the leading entry of every non-zero row is 1 and the entries above the leading entry are zeros. So together with the three conditions of Eklund form, if the matrix also satisfies these two conditions, then the matrix is said to be in reduced row Eklund form. Let us take some examples to figure out what an Eklin form is and what is a reduced row Eklund form. So if we take a look at the first example here, if we take the matrix 3, 4, 2, 6, 0, 
zero seven five zero 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 then this matrix here now we have a row of all zeros which is at the bottom of the matrix then these are my leading entries the entries below the leading entries are zero and each leading entry is to the right of the leading entry of the previous row so this matrix is in echelon form also we can see that the leading entries are not one so this is not in reduced row echelon form let us take another example if we take the matrix 2 3 4 5 6 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 then here in this matrix the leading entries of each row are 2 1 and 1 it can be seen here that the leading entry of the third row is to the left of the leading entry of the previous row so this is not in echelon form let us take some more examples if we take a matrix 1 3 4 5 0 0 1 6 0 0 0 0 then here in this matrix my leading entries of each non-zero row are 1 1 the row of all zeros is at the bottom the entries below the leading entries are 0 so this matrix is in echelon form let us figure out if it is in reduced row echelon form or, or not. Since the leading entries are 1, so that condition is true here. Now here, the entry above the leading entry is not 0. So it is not in reduced row echelon form. Let us take one last example. If we take a matrix 1, 3, 0, 5, 6. 0, 0, 1, 8, 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now here, the row of all zeros is at the bottom. The leading entries are these. The entries below the leading entries are 0. So it is an echelon form. Let us see if it is in reduced row echelon form or not. Now the leading entries are 1. The entries above the leading entry is also 0. So this is in reduced row echelon form. I hope by now we have understood what echelon form is and what reduced row echelon form is. So let us move ahead. So how do we get the reduced row echelon form from a given matrix? So let us observe this matrix here. In the process, let us depict our leading entries by entrapping them in squares and entries below the leading entries by encircling them. Start by considering the first row. Here, A11 is already 1, so we make entries below 1 as zeros. By employing the row operations, R2 goes to R2 minus 2 times of R1 and R3 goes to R3 minus 3 times of R1. So now the matrix A becomes equivalent to 1, 2, minus 1, 0, minus 3, 6, 0, minus 3, 7. Next, we move on to the second row. The first non-zero entry is minus 3. So, it is the leading entry of this row. 
So now we make this leaving entry as 1 by applying the operation R2 goes to minus 1 by 3 of R2. So now A becomes equivalent to 1, 2, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 2, 0, minus 3, 7. Make entries below the leading entry as 0 and the entries above the leading entries as 0. Note that while making the, these entries 0, we have to use the row containing the leading entry. So my operations will be R1 goes to R1 minus 2 times of R2 and R3 goes to R3 plus 3 times of R2. So now my matrix A becomes equivalent to 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, minus 2, 0, 0, 1. Further, in the third row, the leading entry is already 1. So now we make the entries above the leading entries as 0 by using the row operations R2 goes to R2 plus 2 times of R3 and R1 goes to R1 minus 3 times of R3. So now A becomes equivalent to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, which is the reduced row Eklund form of A. Let us take a look at another example. In this example, if we take a look at the first row, the first non-zero entry is at A13 which is to the right of the leading entry of the succeeding row. Thus, in order to get the reduced row Eklund form, we interchange rows 1 and 3. By using the operation R1 interchanged with R3, so now A becomes equivalent to 1, 2, 0, 1, 3, 6, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, minus 1. So now, 1 is the leading entry of the first row. So we make entries below 1 as zeros. Since this is already 0, we just have to make this 0. By using the operation, R2 goes to R2 minus 3 times of R1. And now, A becomes equivalent to 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1. Here we have a row of all zeros which should be at the bottom of the matrix. So we interchange rows 2 and 3. So now my matrix becomes equivalent to 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So the leading entry of the second row now is 1 and the entries below and above, they are already 0. So this is my reduced row Eklund form of A.